I love crafts, obviously. All my homies hate Facebook stories. That's gonna look so ugly, I can imagine it now. So ugly, yay! <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It is me, Dami. If you know me, you know me. If you don't, you don't. Today, I am going to show you my rug making process. I made a rug. Pardon? How the hell do you make a rug? Well, I figured it out. Over this quarantine period, I have ventured my way over to rug talk, rug TikTok. So these people are making rugs with those tufting guns, and I said, wow, that looks easy. I want to do that, and looks fun. So I researched a bit about tufting, £200 for a gun. I said, mm, maybe not today, maybe that'll be for another day. But then the videos kept coming up and I was like, maybe I should make an investment. But luckily, Curry Goat to my rescue, he made a video, <laughs> he made a video about punch needling rugs. I guess uh, the Google algorithm got me great because they did it properly. He made a video of his artistic process and how he made a punch needle rug and I said this is exactly what I've been waiting for I've been waiting for this one turn it up so I did a bit more research into punch needling this is how I made this so if you don't know what punch needling is it is I've got it in a glossier pouch you have this tool called a punch needle this is a millwood one size 9 um, I got this one from Amazon if you want to actually see me unbox most of this um, punch needling propaganda, what is this, materials, then you can watch my isolation vlog because I made it during that time period. Anyway, so you get this uh, punch needle and you thread yarn through it and you just punch. I thought, wow, this is great for stress because you're just punching something. So when I saw his video about punch needling, I was like, okay, okay, I think I can do this. I think I have the abilities for that. So I went onto Amazon to look up punch needling and I saw like mini kits for it. So I saw mini kits for punch needling. So I thought, okay, let me buy one, see if I like it. And if I do, I'll make a rug. So I bought this one. I've not finished it. I couldn't be bothered to do the edge, but it's this. And I was like, wow, okay, this isn't hard. This is quite easy. And this took me an evening to finish. So I was like, let me start making a rug. So I went and bought the supplies, let's say. So because we were in lockdown and, and, oh no, we weren't in lockdown. I don't know what happened. Well, we were kind of, we were about to go into lockdown and I had to self isolate for two weeks, but I didn't know that when I started this process. I had to order most things online. Cory Goat, he used a canvas, like a painter's canvas, but I went into bar Home Bargains, B&M and Asda and I couldn't find a big enough canvas. They were all like A3, so I was like, this is too small for, to be a rug. But then I went into Asda and I saw a picture, a poster frame, which was like 90 centimetres by 60 centimetres. So I got that and I just poked out the, you'll see, and then I got the thread from a website called Love Crafts because I love crafts, obviously. Why did I get it from there? They had an offer, 15% off, um, so for new members, not just for the time period. So I bought my yarn from there, I bought three different colours, orange, pink and blue. The blue is, I thought it was going to be more teal and it is teal to me but when you look at it, and especially on the camera, it's not that teal. So I bought three balls of orange, four balls of blue, and two balls of pink. I bought the blue in a chunky yarn and the orange and pink in a regular yarn, thinking that oh, it would be easier to do the background in a chunkier yarn. But in theory, I should have just bought chunky yarn for everything. Anyways, then I got a staple gun from Amazon for like £13. I also got uh, the punch needle from Millwards from Amazon as well. I got the linen from Etsy. So I wanted monk's cloth originally because it's like softer to, or easier to punch, especially if you're a beginner, that's what they say. But then it's kind of expensive if you want a lot of it. But the linen was only £12 for like, so the linen was one meter by 90 centimeters. So it like just fit the length ways. But because you stretch it to pull it taut, it didn't matter. Well, it did, but being it being like 10 centimeters shorter, 
longer was fine. And then I also used the scissors from the punch needle kit it came with these. The punch needle kit came with these cool craft scissors. They're so sharp. I love them. Yeah, so that's so that's everything that I needed to buy for the rug. So then I made the rug. So first of all, I designed it on Adobe Fresco and then so I could quickly import it to Photoshop onto my computer so that I can print out a stencil. I, I chose flowers because I thought it was going to be easy. Anyway, so now I'm going to pass you over to rug making dummy where she will show you the process, the process of making a rug. Alrighty then, so here I am. I imported the image from Adobe Fresco into Photoshop and then I just copied and pasted all the flowers onto A4 pages so I can print them off and cut them out. So when I made the canvas on Adobe Fresco, I made it the size of the frame. So that's what I'm doing here, then I printed it. And I just did the squiggly bit like freehand. This is me showing you all the materials as if you care, but here I am, thumbs up from Dami okay. herself. Oh, you can hear any water going so I'm having a shower. It's dark, so lighting for this whole video won't be a great, that's not my problem. Anyways, so first step is to staple the fabric to the frame. I've never used a staple gun before, so I'm gonna go outside and staple my shed. What else am I gonna staple? So. Okay, we're outside. This is my shed. Here's the staple gun. <laughs> um, what part? Of okay, wait, there's just a random plank of wood. Let me do this. Okay, nothing happened there. Okay, we made our first staple. It's raining and I'm wearing fluffy moccasins. Let's do another one. Action shot. Okay. Oh, okay. There's a bit of a gap, which is good, I guess. Let's do one more. Action shot. Okay, cool. I think I'm capable. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off and lay the fabric on it. It seems that's my next plan. No, I am undoing all these things. Ow. It's like he hurts. Oh, okay. Let me use my staple remover. Okay, so I watched a YouTube video on how to do this properly. So I'm going to staple one here and one, then pull it taut there, then one there, pull it taut there, and then just make more to make it secure. Oh, one thing I wanted to do was put masking tape on the edges. I can do that later. Three. Oh, first staple. Oh gosh. This is much harder than I thought. <laughs> okay, staple came out. How the hell does this work? Okay. It got something. It did staple. Let me show you. It's stapled, but I'm not sure how secure this is. So you've got to pull it. Okay, I did something. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Is this the rug? Yeah. Okay, so the clicking you might hear is my camera doing a time lapse. But I had a staple and it was here, and I thought it was just too close. So it's left a hole, but in theory, I should be able to scratch this back into action. Okay, so I finished stapling them. They're not, it's not the uh, most taut thing in the world, but it's got some resistance. It's not the most slack either. So I'm going to deal with it because that was too hard for my liking. So I'm going to flip it over and draw on this side. And I, well, I might put uh, masking tape on the edges so it doesn't fray too much. Anyway. 
so yeah let's go it's also like a bit if you look the grain you can see it moving side to side but i don't know how to fix that so we're just gonna roll with it and hope it doesn't ruin it Woo. okay so the next step is to cut out the flowers and because it needs to be reversed i'm going to flip it over when i trace it so top left will actually be top right so no. right here i am cutting tracing cutting tracing doing everything that i'm supposed to do oh and uh, now i'm punching i'm punching this is my first punching on the rug itself as you can see i'm doing an amazing job uh that's me being modest to be completely honest oh my gosh is that what i look like anyways so i've done my first flower my camera's run out of battery so that's why you're here and it could help so this is the first flower i'm so proud of her it took me about ooh, let me check so that one flower took me an hour and 10 minutes <laughs> pardon and i gotta do all of these that's one two three four five hours and then the background, excuse me, I wasn't prepared for this. Anyway, so I'm done the first flower. I messed up because I did the orange bit first. And in theory, I should have just done the pink so that I can get like the circle proper. And yeah, so now I'm going to do all the pink circles and then do all the orange and then I'll fill them in because if you look there's like some holes especially on the back let me show you see like gaps so where it shouldn't be too hard also like some of them pulled out and skipped and I didn't realize until afterwards so yeah I'm going to have to go back in but yeah we're here <laughs> day two on rug making I decided to put two shoe boxes on the ground and go like that but my back was aching I was in the splits because like I had to, oh, we've changed position. That's the shoe box. Um, and I was watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine throughout this whole day. I think I watched about seven hours altogether. So that's fun, love that okay. for me. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> so I've realized I have not actually shown you how to do the punch needle. So I'm gonna do a close up right now. So you thread the punch needle. Should I show you that? okay i'll be nice you get the punch needle so this is the nine milford one i think and then this is the needle threader so you take the wire you can't even see this wire and you put it through this hole and then you put it through the big like tube thing you can't see then you try and put it to the to the end but for some reason this one gets caught on something so you have to try a couple times but you get there eventually okay we've done it uh yeah so that's the whole so as it's dark not my problem it gets dark at like 2 p.m now so now i put the thread through the wire hole just a tiny bit like so and then you just pull and it ends up at the other end and you take it out of this wire so you just make it like an inch long i don't know it doesn't really matter because you'll cut it anyway so i'm gonna start the corner so you punch it through and then ugh, then you pull the end i don't know which end it is but i'm assuming it's this one until the thing comes out that's what all these long ones are and then your ball of yarn okay i bought three of these and i've almost finished and i've still got all this left this this yarn is a bit thin but it will do for now so you need to make sure that you've got like some yarn like just out <laughs> so that you don't pull at it so that you don't pull at the ball or else it won't work you punch down so you grab the punch needle thing you lift it up Okay, and then where this hole is, oh, wrong hole, that's what she said. Uh, where this hole is, like the wide one, that's the direction you want to go. So whatever direction you want to go, this hole has to face it. So if you're already down, you just twist it if you want to like turn a corner or whatever. So you lift it up. You're not supposed to like move up too much, like lift it up too much. And then you just punch down again. Let me just show you from a from another angle. Oh gosh. So once again, 
lift up down i have no idea how far to the like side you're supposed to move i just go with the flow whatever whatever happens happens i'm all right ladies anyways so um just keep going round 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 just following the pattern so here now we want to turn so i just twisted the thing the handle moved it i just twist it before it gets all the way up this is so shaky i'm so sorry <laughs> and just keep going um and then if you make a mistake or sometimes these loops they won't catch so it will be like let me just make it happen so it might look like this well not that dramatic but just lift it up and pull them out so just pulling them out it leaves holes but it's fine you can just do that and it closes them up kind of so then if it if you want to like start over just pull and then it will happen but let's say you skipped a bit so let's say there was like holes like that you just kind of pull it <laughs> to where it's like the last stitches where they were normal pull them to the end pull at the top of the thing <laughs> until you get to like the bottom scratch these away i don't really scratch them on monk's cloth it kind of closes up by itself but this linen it stays there but it's fine you just kind of uh go in between the holes and then just start again and it gets easier because the first one i did it was low-key horrendous they kept, they kept skipping let me show you it so this is the first one i did and you can see like i there's loads of them which have skipped because i wasn't paying attention properly but um like this was the one which i did like straight after and it's not as bad same with this this and this once i've probably finished the whole thing i'm gonna fill in like all these gaps with double the thread because this thread is kind of thin for what I'm doing. Okay, if you hear clicking, it's the time lapse of my camera. But uh, another thing I do, because this isn't the tightest, like it's not that taut as it's supposed to be, I push down on the fabric as I'm doing it just to add a bit more resistance to the fabric. You know what I mean? Can't even see it, I'm just like this. Can y'all see that? Hmm, oh well. Just kind of push down. So that it's as tight as it can be. Okay, don't mind the clicking again. So I finished the flowers. There are gaps. So I'm gonna have to go back in. I'm gonna do that once I've finished the whole thing. This is the best one. Now it's time to get the blue thread. And do it over again. Moving in and in a one night stand. Okay, so that's the difference between the chunky thread and the thin thread. So hopefully this chunky thread covers more surface area and it doesn't look as sparse as these ones do. So in day two, I also decided to start doing the outer edge. Um, I didn't do that much. I did a couple of lines. You know the drill. You know how it is. Oh, I did that much. I'm just showing you how much I did. Day three, this is. I'm wearing a dressing gown. Um, I got a new angle today. I sat on a, the couch and put a chair in front of me so I can lean it on. That was a bit better than the uh, shoebox situation. But here we are, day three. Doing the, just going around, just, just going through the motions of punching and... I would like do a section, I would do like a section and then like close it off and then do like I did a line there, that made no sense. Anyway that's how we finished day three. Oh no we didn't finish there, I think I finished the background on day three. Oh well go, well I'm not doing anything there am I? I was just watching TV and everyone kept disturbing me because it was the middle of the night. So. Okay, oh. I hope you can't hear my mum, I bet you can hear my mum. Anyway, uh, I've paused Gossip Girl for you, but... I've just got this much left to do. Anyways, so this took three balls of the blue yarn and I bought four. 
so the blue is the only one where okay went wrong there bit rogue the blue is the only one where i got the right measurement for so love that for me ah, i've been working on this today for five hours um so that's nice love that oh yes yes okay now okay where's the hell is this needle okay that's the needle where's my scissors found my scissors let's cut this off oh wow shut oh my god where are you going Let me put flash on. Okay. Can y'all see what I'm doing? Cause I can't. Oh my gosh. Nothing's going red. What can I, I can't see. I can't see. Snip. <gasps> okay. This is it. She is finished, kind of. I think I'm gonna do an orange rim around the edge because when I whip stitch it, I can't bother to do it like in a squiggle and I need to fill in all these gaps in orange and blue but as you can see there's gaps in the blue on the back like you can see there's gaps but it doesn't look as gappy because the oh my days I made a rug I can't wait I can't wait to put my footsies on there oh, my footsies oh, I'm so sorry <gasps> wow okay I'm so excited um what is that song I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Come on, come on, come on, find them to die. Wow. Anyways, so I'm gonna finish for the day because I cannot be bothered. Or maybe I should fill it. No, I can't be bothered. So I'm gonna order some pe sorry, hate to be rude. Uh, I'm gonna order some PVA glue because that's what I'm gonna use as a backing, because the other glue I read to use apparently someone in the comments was like the tv's on also so uh someone in the comments was like it's 60 dollars 80 dollars with 60 dollars delivery i'm not even i can't bother to even search in the uk so i'm just gonna use strong pva glue I'm gonna order some a lot today so maybe it'll arrive tomorrow i should finish this including gluing tomorrow but i'll probably finish the whip stitching on what day what today is wednesday so friday i should finish the whip stitching ah i'm so excited ah let me let me do a bird's eye view one one sec there she is Whew, wow the measuring and with a ruler i think like 3.5 centimeters would be a good border so it would go up to like there of orange right it will just be square but this bit, it's low key in the wrong place to do 3.5 because it'll just, I'll have to, unless I, I don't know, unless I can figure a way to move the fabric in. I guess I could just undo these two and just not stretch it as hard. <laughs> mm. I'll figure it out. Small problem guys, I can't find my punch needle. <laughs> hmm, don't know how I managed this one. Found it in the bag with some yarn oops keep an eye on your supplies look at this bag i love it anyway what i'm gonna do as well is um i'm gonna double thread like the thread see what happens <laughs> all right so now i'm just filling in the gaps of the orange and had to double thread it so I kept cutting the yarn, but in real realization, I should have actually just used the two balls of orange that I had. See, after, because you have not taken your clothes off the radiator, you have to meticulously place it. You don't have to take them off. Yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. What? Well, couldn't. I mean, you have arms, so... Let me take my clothes now. Take your clothes. Even though, you know, you can't have to take your clothes. What, my socks? I'll take my socks, don't worry. I'll get around to them.
After that fight with my brother, not really a fight, just us having a comedy show. I was pulling in the blue background and then I'm doing the outer edge, which I mean probably wasn't the best idea. Probably should have planned that in the beginning, but you live on your own. As you can see, I've done the orange. There's some gaps, so I double threaded this whole bit, but you can still see gaps. This is six day progress. Oh, so it should be finished Monday. <laughs> so it's one week because I have to whip stitch the edge. And I think I don't have enough orange to do the whip stitch, so I might have to do it in pink, which could look okay. I know I know how to start them. Hold the drinks out. Okay guys, here we are again. It's not the last day. This is now a week later. Um, do y'all want to see me? Probably not. Hello. Um, so, don't mind this. The glue has dried. Let me zoom in on that for you. It's nice and crunching. Um, this bit did unpeel, but when I flip it over, it is, it's fine. It's the hot. Whatever, actually there is a hole, should I redo it? Okay, so let's see if it will pierce through now that I've glued it. Yes, it does. It's kind of hard to get through though. Literally just, this is probably unnecessary, but I'm here now. Okay, that's enough. Can y'all see the staples? Where are the staples? Can you see that? Nope. Okay, so we're gonna do the first one. So this is the stapler undoer from the staple thing. So you just put it under and do that. Okay, I mean not for staples everywhere. Oh my gosh, I've got a rug almost. So it's, I've taken it off. Here she is, not on a frame. Oh, whoa. So I can go. Okay, here's me and my rug. Woo. Okay, so now what? You might be thinking, dummy, it's still ugly. Yes, I'm aware. Uh, all I've got to do now, okay, one thing I don't like about it is this bit goes too far out compared to like this side like this side it's like a squiggly line but this side it's just like what did you do there dummy please help us out uh it also looks upside down is it yeah it's this way up so now i'm going to cut off the rest of the thread let me put it on the ground wow oh my gosh look at this rug okay let's get let me put two i've just washed my socks <gasps> you're excited Yes! Now I can do tap on it! Anyway, just me and my room. And uh, so I'm gonna cut off the thread and then I've gotta whip stitch the edge. Woo! She's almost done! She's almost done! since I last spoke to you, I'm going to whip stitch the edge. I am in the process of watching a YouTube video about how to do it. And one qualm I do have, when I said at the beginning I should probably put tape on the edge to stop it from fraying, I really should have done that because all this is frayed like down to nothing. So it's gonna be hard to fold over. So um, yeah, that's that. It won't look good. I already know that, but we live and we learn. So in that kit, it came with plastic sewing needles, like this. So hopefully, if you want a demo, just poke. 
cool. So I'm gonna need to use the light pink because I don't think, I was just gonna use orange, but I don't think I have enough orange to do the whole wedge. So that's sad. Oh, do I? Let me show you how much orange I have, BRB. No BRB was needed, it was on the floor here. That's how much orange I have left. I feel like I could have enough, but I don't wanna risk it. Should I risk it for a biscuit? It would look better orange. That's what it would be like. Yeah, let's just go for pink. Who cares, who cares? Hopefully this will be done today because I've had enough. I've had enough, it's been eight days. This rug is eight days in the making. In the making. And then I can finally put my toesies on it. Not just me socks, me toesies. Let's go for best thing that I'm now whip stitching. I don't have to be hunched over anymore because I'm not on a frame. I'm not restricted, I'm just, I can lounge. I can be as far back as I want. We've got a hoop now. We now thread the hoop into, let's see that, yeah. Thread the hoop into the threader, which is already threaded into the needle eye, like so. Oh my gosh, I'm such a good demonstrator. All the way to the end, that's cut because, let me zoom in. I'm gonna take this one out anyway. Should I fold it under? That kind of makes sense. You do one stitch up and then just before when you get to like this bit of the hoop, you loop your needle into there. I always like to keep hold of the threads here and then just pull on that and make that tight. Toit. Um, yeah, I've done this wrong. <laughs> I need to go. F I need to go further into the book bit, but I'm just demonstrating for now. And then you just kind of go. I don't know. Ah, oh, oops. Okay, something's gone wrong here. <laughs> There's a. I somehow have added a knot already. How did I do that? Okay. Never mind. False alarm. No need to ring the alarm. Maybe I should tie a knot there. I hate doing that. I feel like it's a waste. What's going on on Facebook? Nothing. Oh, I've been mentioned. Mentioned in a story. Not a Facebook story. All my homies hate Facebook stories. I don't know why I'm demonstrating. There's, I'll link some videos <laughs> in the description box on how to actually do this without me telling you the wrong thing to do. Anyways, also, because this is um, wonky, like here, Ooh, what was that noise? <laughs> you can see it kind of goes down because that's where the pin was stretched out. Everything's a mess. So my plan was to kind of fold some of these in to make it, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm going with the flow. But this is what the pink edge looks like. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this now. See you on the flip side. So here I am whip stitching, whip stitching my life away. I have no idea how I did the corners, I just kind of figured it out and I just kind of rolled the fabric around and hoped for the best. It's really wonky on the end, final products of the rug, but the whole thing is wonky so it just adds to the character of it, you know? Okay guys, it is midnight. This took this binding um, took me five hours altogether, uh, so that's great. But it is done. I'm in my pajamas now. I made a rug. You too. Look at this. Let me do some glissades. Fifth position, glissade. Anyway, now that the ballet is finished, I just need to clean it up a bit. So see how that's messy i don't think it's going to get much better but i don't know what really went wrong with the edges i had to fill in some gaps because they were like hella noticeable i don't know why i didn't show you but they were there like this but worse and bigger ever in my 21 years before about two months ago did i think this would be produced from the hands of Danny? wow it's crazy. Life's crazy. Life comes at you fast. Okay, so now you've seen how I made the rug. Here she is. Ooh. 
in all her glory. Oh, wow. Shadi call 911. My rug is burning up. Anyway, so a couple mistakes that I made. The th yarn. So as you saw, I had to double do it. Double thread the yarn to do the punching at the end when I was refilling the holes. And then I did it for the edge. It didn't help because it was just more yarn, but still the gaps in the size. So next time, use chunky yarn. Or if you're gonna make it, use chunky yarn. I'm sure that that yarn will be fine if you're doing like a smaller project. But this one, it was just really noticeable that you could see the gaps. I've had this on the floor now for quite some time and it's not shed. However, I have not been bothered to cut off or to make it like flat. It's kind of all over the place, but that's because I didn't have proper scissors for like fabric. I didn't have fabric scissors. So I bought some from Amazon. They are so sharp. I don't have to struggle cutting linen ever again. So I'm going to eventually like give it a bit, give it a trim, give it a fade on the sides. What else would I do differently? That's it really. I enjoyed doing this. It was fun. Oh, it took me about an hour per flower. And then the background, I actually timed it all, but my timer, my timer just stopped working. So it deleted all the times. Anyway, it took me like an hour per flower. It took me like six hours to do the background altogether. Ish, six, seven, eight hours. I don't know. It took me a while. And then the edge took me about five hours again. Whip stitching took me about three hours. Um, My whip stitching isn't very neat, nor is it um done properly some sections are fine but some aren't some really aren't i probably did have enough orange to do the whip stitch so maybe next time take the risk risk it for a biscuit risk it for a whip stitch one may say that's it that's how you make a rug i have no artistic ability as you can see from the design of this altogether it cost me about 25 Thread 25, fabric 12, so that's 37, uh, frame 16, 43, um, punch needle 53, uh, what else? That kit 11 pounds. So maybe it cost me like 60 ish pounds altogether, but then it took me altogether, I keep saying altogether, um, overall, the time it took me, I would say it took about 30 hours of work, and I would do it like five hours a day because I didn't have anything else to do. So I was just making a rug. But yeah, it took me a week altogether. And the glue seems like it holds up fine. It's it's really rough. Like it's a nail file. Can you hear that? That's all. That's all you need to know about making a rug. I hope you enjoyed this video. See my stress. My trials and tribulations of making a rug. It was quite fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself. Uh, would I do it again? Probably. Not probably. I've already ordered, ordered the yarn for the next time. I actually spent £50 on yarn this time because my mum wants a rug. I want another one and I want to make a positioned wall hanging. <laughs> so you know Ariana Grande positions. Perfect. Perfect. Anyway, the like lettering of it where it says positions I'm gonna make that but just like this so blue backing and then black I also might buy a q-snap frame instead of so when I do like smaller projects like maybe a cushion I also want to make a trilogy of cushions <laughs> where it's an orange flower with a pink stamen and then a pink flower with an orange stamen and then a checkerboard and then it will be a pillow trio. And I think I'll buy the Q-snap frame for that, which is like 50 by 50. 50 centimetres by 50 centimetres. I think I'm going to ask for that for Christmas because I do not want to spend that money. And it costs £15. Anyways, yeah. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it somewhat. Please like, comment, subscribe for my lockdown rug. My lockdown rug. Maybe I should have written locked out. That's the next one. <gasps> wow. That's the next one. I'm going to do a love heart lock and it says locked out. That's going to look so ugly. I can imagine it now. So ugly. Yay. See ya. <laughs>